young age, David has been involved with community activities. He has been involved in fundraising efforts for the Red Cross and MS Australia. David also successfully organised a Clean Up Australia site in Chelsea this year. David is a member of the Kingston City Council Youth Consultative Committee. Through this committee, he has been able to raise issues facing the youth and give feedback on youth associated groups. Hi David, could you please tell our viewers a little something about yourself? Well, I've come from a family uh, that's always taught me to get involved in community issues and that's been, become a large part of my life uh, as a result. So for me, being involved in community issues is something that I'm quite passionate about and belonging to community groups is what I enjoy and love. And that's uh, partly why I'm involved in so many local activities and I'm interested in running for uh, council later this year. Uh, so what community-based activities have you been involved with in the past? Well, from a young age, I've been involved in sporting groups uh, and the local scouting group. And through those uh, activities, I suppose the foundation was set for some of the activities I'm involved in now, uh, ranging from the village committees that council run and the uh, Youth Consultative Committee that Kingston Council also run. But I've also been involved in a range of uh, charity collections for the Salvation Army, MS and the Red Cross as well. So they're things that I feel make us, while they're small events, they make a big difference to the people that you're collecting for and helping. Uh, and additionally, I've been involved in Clean Up Australia Day for 13 years now. And that's been a big part of my life. Uh, and this year, I suppose, was extra special for me in the aspect that I was able to run a site in Chelsea where there hadn't been a site before because I'd turned 18, I was able to be a site coordinator. So that was a really exciting experience. And more recently, I've been working with some people in the community to establish local uh, committees and associations to try and uh, bring a voice uh, to the council from the people mm -hmm. uh, to raise I suppose, concerns and issues that might exist but aren't being heard at the moment. I mean, you're only 18. Mm. How do you find the enthusiasm and the energy that you, take, that you need mm. to take on such community-focused events? Yeah, well, I suppose, again, it comes down to it's what I enjoy. So while some people might love getting up in the morning and running off to football or whatever it may be, for me, this is what I enjoy, so that's how uh, I can go about doing so many things. Uh, and it's a great opportunity to make friends and meet people in the society that you wouldn't normally meet if you weren't involved in these activities. And that's provided me with a lot of, I suppose, support through my life as well from the people out, out in the community and the ability to get involved in a range of areas that help you now and help the community uh, and builds really strong friendships that go beyond your school or your sporting environment. So I find that that in itself is enough to give me reason to go along to activities. But it's also the results that you see at the end of the day, whether it's the people benefiting from the collections you've done, or whether it's you know children running along the beach after Clean Up Australia Day, and they're not having to worry about where rubbish might be. It really does make a difference to the community, and I find that it's a worthwhile effort. So. In your own opinion, uh, what is the importance of such community events in well, the growth and the welfare of the community? I think the biggest benefit for the community is the social inclusion that comes as a result. So it doesn't matter if you're a male or female or you come from another country, you can all just get involved and it's a perfect opportunity for people to make a difference in their community and be heard rather than just pushed aside and say, oh well, you're a small group, so oh, you don't get listened to. It's a real opportunity to say, well, everyone gets a voice when they get involved. And whether it's bringing about new facilities for children or disability access for the elderly, they're all worthwhile efforts and they end up improving everyone's quality of life locally. Uh, and through the, I suppose, improved uh, accountability that people have, because they feel that, well, I've helped create this society, so I want to look after it and it builds a sense of social cohesion throughout and a lot of people then feel that they love living where they do rather than detached from society and just feel that oh, I come home and I go to work each day so it really gives them a sense of belonging as well. Mm -hmm. So is it that feeling of uh, community togetherness that and 
creating a strong community that you would say motivates you to be involved with volunteer work? No, I think that's the number one thing because you're really uh, helping people get involved in things which they might not have otherwise been involved in. So for me, that's a big part of why I do it, but I think the results are also important at the end of the day. And in ensuring that local politicians hear what the people have to say rather than just say, oh, well, we'll just brush you aside because uh, you're just one person as well. So are you studying at the moment? Oh, yes, I'm uh, doing Year 12 at the moment. Yeah. And, I mean, how do you feel that working in these volunteer situations, does, do you feel that impacts on your study time? I think, if anything, it helps to improve my focus because I've got a limited amount of time like everyone and it helps me to prioritise and say, well, this is what I need to do first and then I get that underway and then do it quickly rather than you know disappearing off down to the local shops to buy food and then coming back. Uh, and a lot of what I do at school overlaps to what I do in the community. So a lot of the sort of legal studies that I do at school and business management helps me run some of the local associations and help to provide, I suppose, more useful input than I otherwise would have been able to. I understand you're, you, you manage your own business. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what that yeah. business is and what it entails? Well, about five years ago, I set up a nursery uh, at my grandparents' house because I'd been involved with them for quite a while uh, in a conservation society that they set up locally and they were getting a bit too old to continue that so I thought well I'll make use of all the facilities and resources they have there and then I developed a local little nursery supplying some of the local markets and fairs that I've been to with indoor plants so they're decorative pots with succulents or cacti in them and providing some of the uh, retails with them is a great experience because they then uh, come back to you in the future and you build I suppose another set of relations that you wouldn't normally get if you just went about normal teenage activities. We're now going to go on a short break. Please stay tuned for the rest of the interview. I suppose I was quite excited when I got it because that was something that was uh, recognised throughout Australia and it had opened a lot of doors for me since then. Hello guys, welcome to Dhoom Films. We are an audio video production company that provides green screen recordings, digital biography, event recordings and much more. Contact us on 1300 Melody, that is 1300 M-E-L-O-D-Y. And welcome back from the break, we're here still with David Eden. So I understand you were awarded the Ant Hill Up and Comers Under 30 Award. Can you tell our viewers a little bit something about what that award entails? Well, the Ant Hill Group was set up in 2008 by an entrepreneur who wanted to focus on innovation in Australia, particularly in the sort of technology space. And the, he set up a, an award system as an initiative to try and recognise young people in the community who are achieving in those fields, whether it be management, skills, marketing or perseverance. They wanted to focus on saying, well, you're doing great work, let's recognise that and try and build, again, a group of people who recognise that and then open some more doors for you later on in life. Uh, as people say, oh, you did get that, oh, you're pushing ahead, oh, would you like some more help with that, or whatever the case may be. It provides a great opportunity to really get involved uh, in the business world. And how do you feel as, as yourself, as, a, as a, a, an award recipient? I suppose I was quite excited when I got it because that was something that was uh, recognised throughout Australia and it had opened a lot of doors for me since then after a technology conference in Sydney I had a few people ring me up and say oh would you like some work experience up here later on so that's an avenue I might pursue later this year uh, over the Christmas break for a few weeks and learn a bit about the technology space. I mean obviously you've engaged with so many mm. activities you've done your volunteer work running your own business mm. Um, you're studying, you've, you're an award winner. Um, as a younger member of the community, what do you feel the, the pressing issues facing the youth of the Southward area? I suppose on a local uh, scene, it's the lack of facilities that are in our area uh, that's really hurting the youth because North 
uh, ward, which is sort of Oakley, Clayton throughout Kingston. They have a lot of youth facilities available there and particularly around Southland, there's a lot of facilities. But between Mordialloc and Patterson Lakes, there's a lack of uh, facilities and access to, for the youth to get involved. So I think it's important to focus on that and ensuring that there is some type of facility or avenue for the youth to get involved in local issues. But on a more broader sense throughout Victoria, the recent TAFE cuts have been something that is really worrying and concerning to a lot of youth because I've spoken to quite a few and they all say, well, we were planning on going to TAFE next year, but unfortunately my mum is working two shifts already at Woolworths or whatever the case may be, so we can't afford it. So they're having to defer their education for one or two years because of uh, quite large cuts to the TAFE and education sector, which is unfortunate. And how do you think, uh, obviously you're standing in for the Kingston Council, okay. how do you think that the community would benefit from electing a younger member of the community to represent them? Well, when I speak to people in the community and when people call me up with their concerns, they say there's a lack of representation in the area by councillors who aren't necessarily committed to the task of representing people. Uh, and whether that's because they're too busy with their full-time jobs or whether it's because they're interested in uh, pursuing other issues, uh, I'm not too sure, but there's for sure a lack of representation. And I've, I'd be committed to ensuring that everyone gets a voice, whether or not you know, their views align with mine, I'd still want to represent them and say, well, this is an issue to you. So I feel that it's important I bring that up at council and try and represent you on that. Because at the end of the day, it's not about councillors saying, this is my view and that's all that counts. But it's about getting out there and saying, this is what the people want. My job is to represent them and then carrying through on that and ensuring that people are represented. Because it's really easy to say, oh, I'll do this, this and this and then actually not do anything at the end of the day. So I'd be really committed to saying, well, I'll, have, I'll make sure I have enough time to do the job properly and I'll listen to you regardless of what your views are and try and do something for you about them. So how do you think uh, you would go about creating a more community-focused mindset amongst the younger generations? I feel that there's a lot of people out there who want to get involved and a lot of youth who say, I oh, would like to be involved and we'd like to help out, but we're not too sure how. And when people don't know how to do something, they often feel disenfranchised and pushed to the side. So I'd be committed to saying, well, let's develop ways of getting them involved and helping them get involved and raising awareness amongst the youth about what activities and associations there are, whether that's having a local community fair where community groups come along and say, oh, this is what we do, would you like to get involved? Uh, or whether it be putting out more brochures targeted at youths to say, this is what you can do, this is when they're on, would you like to come along? Because for me, whenever I've gone along to a group, people are thrilled to see a younger person there. And they say, we really do need someone to carry through on the issues because we're getting older and we can't do it all ourselves. But there's not many young people out there getting involved in groups beyond sporting uh, per se. So on a wider scale, um, what would you say you would most like to achieve as a member of the council? For me, ensuring that everyone gets a fair go is important and that ties into a wide range of issues from uh, rates, because in Kingston the rates are over 65% more than the neighbouring suburb Bayside and a lot of people, particularly the elderly, working class families, people with children, uh, and even just single people are saying, we can't afford this because it's another six or seven hundred and our rates have gone up by several hundred this year. So that means some people, if you're on a fixed income, are going to have to cut back on their food, their groceries, uh, and say, well, we're going to have to reduce our quality of life because the council's not willing to focus on productivity. Uh, and instead they just choose to increase revenue. So I think at the end of the day, that's an important area to focus on to ensure everyone gets a fair go. But more broadly, I suppose there's inappropriate development in the area. So to ensure that neighbours get a fair go, because why should one group per, uh, get 12 or 13 units on a block when the average is one or two houses per block? 
and it's not fair to everyone else in the community who then struggles with parking or can't get into their property because the street's too busy and that's a big issue particularly along the beachside area because often you have to wait five to ten minutes just to get out of your street in the morning and these de these developments just add to those problems and there's a big concern as well that one person can get a unit put on their backyard while another can't get uh, a simple extension done. So a lot of people are concerned about what's actually going on internal to council because there's you know developers who can quite easily get 13 or 14 units on a block and then someone wants to put a carport in and they spend two years being pushed between departments to get that through and that's not fair for the community. We go on a short break, please stay tuned for the rest of the interview with David Eden. Local activities and groups and then build that sense of community and have the enforcement through the local laws and police, I think the issue can be dealt with. We're now going to continue our interview with David Eden. So how do you think that antisocial behaviour impacts on the community? Well, I think that antisocial behaviour is a big problem in the local area and it leads to a lot of people feeling that they can't come to the local shops or the beaches or wherever the problem areas might be. So it really does affect a lot of people, whether it be elderly or the younger generation. Uh, and even some middle-aged people feel quite intimidated by seeing big gangs or groups of people uh, in the local shopping centre, whether they be drinking or hurling abuse at people. So I think that's a really big issue that needs to be tackled through council. And more recently, uh, a few people and myself got together and we created a petition. So we put together a request to council to say, this is what we'd like you to do. And then we've been out collecting signatures, door knocking and uh, going through the local shopping centre saying to people, are you concerned about this and would you be willing to support a request to increase the number of local laws officers? And out of about 100 people we've spoken to, only two people said that they wouldn't and you know, 98 uh, people said that they were willing to sign it and they thought it was a really big issue that needed to be dealt with. Uh, so that's quite a good, I so, suppose, step in the right direction to dealing with the issue and hopefully council will listen to the concerns of residents and say we need to take these extra steps to deal with it. Because only recently there was a man coming off the train at five o'clock at night, uh, I'm assuming from work, and he was walking along the street and this group of teenagers, about 18 or 19, were all drinking and they saw him and started hurling abuse at him and chasing him across the street. And he just started running uh, across the street, across the road, you know, over four lanes of traffic uh, and ran towards the police station, which is thankfully uh, just near the shopping centre. Uh, so that was really disappointing and a lot of people were quite worried and a few people even ran into shops because they weren't too sure what was going to happen next. So antisocial behaviour is unfortunately a big problem, but there are steps that can be taken to deal with it if people are committed to tackling the issue. Obviously. Um and which demographic do you feel sits, I, I guess, most prominently in the position of creating antisocial behaviour? Well, from what I've seen and you hear in the media, it's a lot of people between 16 and, say, 25, 26, uh, in part because they're either not at school or they're out of school and they just want to create mischief and they don't have enough to do in the community. So. You know, if we can create more activities for people to get involved with, this will also ha help to tackle uh, the issue by dealing with the problem, that being the boredom of a younger generation, and also tightening up on access to alcohol as well is probably going to uh, do a lot to uh, tackle the issue because a lot of young people are drinking every weekend at parties and then overflowing onto streets, which creates a problem for a lot of people. So you know, if we can tackle the alcohol, issues, get people involved in uh, 
local activities and groups and then build that sense of community and have the enforcement through the local laws and police, I think the issue can be dealt with, you know, through taking a multi-pronged approach. And how do you feel as being someone who took part in an activity like Scouts as a younger person? How do you feel being involved mm. in that sort of association when you're younger stops maybe antisocial behaviour? Well, I think being involved in the scouting movement or something similar to that teaches you a lot about who you are and, you know, trying to make a difference in the community that's positive. And it teaches you that there's a lot of activities and groups out there that you can get involved in because the scouts are a mechanism really to involvement in a lot of other areas. It's not just about tying knots and going out on camping trips, but uh, building a sense of accountability towards the community we live in and, you know, caring for other people around you, whether it's delivering meals on wheels, whether it's collecting for charities or cleaning up at a, a Clean Up Australia Day site, they do get involved in a lot of groups and I think that it helps people to develop a sense of self-discipline uh, in their life and really I suppose sets them up well for uh, later involvement in community issues and, and ensuring that they're not getting into trouble because they know where they can go to get involved in activities and they know that through their actions they can negatively impact people if they do the wrong thing. So on your, on your website you have a tagline, action mm. not words. How do you feel that tagline represents you? Well, I've always been committed to carrying through on what I promised to do. If, if I can't do something, I won't promise that I can do it. And I feel that uh, unfortunately a lot of people do make promises that they can't carry through. So this really is a commitment to saying, this is what I want to focus on and this is what I will deliver on. And ensuring that everyone gets the opportunity to put forward something that then gets delivered on rather than some people coming forward and saying, I'll do this, this and this, and then it becomes words, not actions. So I feel that it's important to carry through on what you say to ensure that the community actually gets what they vote for. Mm. And what message would you like to convey to the viewers of Doom Channel? Well, I suppose the, the first thing I'd say is get involved in your local community because it can really improve the quality of life uh, you enjoy and people in the local area enjoy. So I think that's a really important issue and whatever it may be or whatever you may believe in, just be a voice for that issue because if you don't, someone else might not and then the issue just gets overlooked. So I'd say firstly, get involved in the local area. Uh, and secondly, you know, if anyone is willing to help out on my campaign or in the local area, I'd say please get in contact with me uh, and you can go to my website which is David Eden, E D E N dot org. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure having you on. Oh, no worries. Thanks for having me uh, come in and do an interview. And I experience. wish you all the best in the future. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to our Doom Channel's Inspiration. We hope you join us next week as we'll continue our journey with another guest. Thank you for watching.